now we're recording. What this section is about is you're, you're on that deserted island that the other people here want you to be on without technology, and you have your stick. You're on Survivor. You're on Survivor. You have your stick, and you have to draw what a function looks like. <coughs> Who would survive in this class on Survivor? Military man. <laughs> all right. So what this, all this is saying here is notice if I have concave down, what's happening is, is that my, it's still a positive derivative. My function's still increasing, but notice it's starting to, it's starting to slow down, meaning my first derivative, my slopes are decreasing. If I'm going this way, concave up, notice that I have pause. I mean, these are all positive slopes, but now this is starting to increase faster. So that's what we talk about concavity. It's concave up if your derivative is increasing, concave down if your derivative is decreasing, and again on this interval. So the first derivative test said set the first derivative equal to zero, and that will find critical points. The second derivative test says, well, if I have the second derivative and it's greater than zero, then I'm going to have concave up. If I have the second derivative and it's less than zero, I have concave down. What's the second derivative mean? Acceleration. Acceleration. So I think logically, I don't, you know me, I ain't gonna memorize that junk. I'm gonna look at this and say, okay, this basically, I'm not saying it's going negative, but this basically tells me less than zero, it's starting to slow down, my acceleration. This is telling me it's starting to speed up. And so that's just kind of how I remember it. And again, a lot of these definitions you're going to see are ways to find max and mins. Well, our critical points. Also, we have what's called an inflection point. An inflection point is where we change concavity. In other words, where this went from concave up to concave down are the opposite. Now, again, it's kind of weird teaching biocal because we do a, they do, they've been doing inflection points for two weeks now. They do a lot with stuff like this because they look at maybe where did a population stand still. You know, you have some, um, I always like to say something in a Petri dish because I should have been a biology major because isn't Petri a cool word? Mm -hmm. Petri, yeah, that's a cool word. Is that also a dinosaur in the label for time? I love that. That was my show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. So I can, find, I can find inflection points by taking the second derivative and setting it equal to zero. So that, and if you think about it, because you're changing, you're, you're not accelerating. You went from either de decelerating to accelerating, and you kind of stop. So here's our definitions here. It says, if my first derivative equals zero. Again, don't read that like that. That says, okay, I have a max or a min. That's a critical point right there. My second derivative, remember this is where we said, oh, that kind of makes sense that I'm starting to slow down here my acceleration, so I have a max. If I have this one, I have a critical point, and then it's, it's going to start to speed up my acceleration, and so then I have a min. This one I think is funny, but you will see an example next class. Um, I guess next Wednesday, that it says if both of these equal zero, well, it could have a max, it could have a min, it may not. I always think those are funny, like, well, then what is it? And so you're going to actually see this in, um, in an example coming up. What happens is you have something like that where you can't take the derivative, okay? You have a cusp, you have a sharp, yeah. So that's what ends up happening if both of these sometimes are equal to zero. You could look at values to the left and to the right and see if it's increasing, decreasing, all that good stuff. All right, so this, once again, is pr probably what you could look forward to next Friday on a test, is I probably will give you a function and tell you to graph it. A quiz, I'm sorry. I know, you guys think there's a difference between test and quiz. Well, there isn't the grade point average, right? All right, so anyway, I'm going to give you a function and I'm going to tell you to graph it. And you're going to say, but I can't use my calculator? No. So what you do, what I do, and I probably jump to what's funny, this last one first. I find intercepts. That's a, always the first thing I do when I graph, when I try to graph, look at a graph of something, I graph the intercepts. But going through here, 
if you know the domain, okay, so you know it's going to extend out, or think of an absolute value function, it's only going to be in the positive region. If you remember your symmetries, probably most of you x squared remember that it's symmetric with the y-axis, then this is kind of nice because you only have to do part of the graph and then you could just repeat the other side. Find derivatives, uh, first and second derivatives, because this will help me find critical points. It'll find me where I have max and mins. Again, I can look in intervals to see where it's increasing, decreasing. I can find an inflection point, which again, an inflection point tells where it's changing con concavity, concave up to concave down or reverse. And then if I have any um, asymptotes, okay? So this would be a way that, again, you don't have technology, um, you would actually graph these. All right, so here's your question. Um, I may not even tell you all that. I may give you that and just flat out say graph it. Well, well, I guess I got to tell you this because some of you would be like real funny and you just pick a whole bunch of points, right, <laughs> and plot them. So what I want to do is I want to graph this with calculus, I should say. So the first thing that I'm going to do, not you because if you're in the classroom, is I would just graph it just to see what it looks like because that way I already know what I should get for my max one and I even know about where my point of inflection is, okay? I'm changing from concave down to concave up. That's where the change is. And so this at least gives me an idea when I work the problem out, am I doing it correctly? All right, so find the inflection point. It's where the second derivative equals zero. And this is why I said it's not like you're learning something that's not going to help you for your test uh, Monday. You're still finding derivatives. So I find the first derivative. And then I find the second derivative, so 2x minus 2. I set this equal to 0, and then I solve point of inflection, and I get x equals 1. Now, again, this is just something that is kind of, I guess I could say, a pet peeve of mine. When I say critical point, inflection point, I mean an x, y. I mean a point, right? So all you have to do is plug it back into the original function. Now, the only thing that I see students, because in fact, most students are saying, ooh, chapter four is easy, getting easier. The only problem I see students have in here, well, when do I know when I plug something into the derivative? When do I know when I plug it into the second derivative? When do I know when I plug it into the original function? Well, of course, the original function, if you want to stick a point on there, the first derivative, if you want to know if it's increasing or decreasing, and then the second derivative for concavity. Okay, so that, that way you kind of have an idea when you plug things in me an actual point that me, I would go chunk that on the graph, and because if I plotted it and it was way up there, then I know I did something wrong. Okay, so it's like, or at least look at the graph and say, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So I could put a point there. And again, maybe I've already put my intercepts, because I told you that's one thing that I like to do. I know I have an inflection point here. I don't really know if this is going from concave down to concave up because the, the function could look a little different. So I, and I say, well, it would kind of be nice to know where I have max and mins. So how do you find a max and a min, which we already did. You set it equal to zero. This, of course, is pretty simple. Probably everybody in here can factor that fine. But as I've mentioned before, if you get something that's, that might take you a while to factor, um, certainly the quadratic, throw it in the quadratic formula, okay? Just don't take that time, certainly on a test. <clears throat> so this gives me my two critical points. This is back 4.1. That's what we did in 4.1. The only difference here is I wasn't given any endpoints. This is just going to be. Now this is the part that I said you could make like 4.3 even easier, is I could take this definition and I can evaluate. I already know this column right here, those are those values. In other words, those are my C values. These are my critical points where my first derivative is zero. So this is where I was saying that students get confused. Well, where do I plug values in? If I plug my critical points into my second derivative, use these rules that tell me if I have a local min or a local max, okay, by that definition, okay, that I had on the slide before. So that gives me, if it's greater than zero, a min, less than zero, a max. And then once again, if I want to know exact values, then I can evaluate at these two values, again, just to find a point, okay? Because And these are probably easier that you're going to think of. You need points because you're graphing it. So you need 
All right, so I evaluate both, meaning I plug in three, I plug in negative one, and I get my actual points. Now the next part I'm going to do um, just for sake of showing how to do it, but if you logically think about this, so that's my, my max and my min, I want to see the concave up and concave down. Well, if you, if you know it's a min, you know it's concave up, right? So you don't really have to do this step, but I you and do all of these steps. I plugged those points in. And so here's where I said I want to know the concavity. If the concavity is greater than zero, it's concave up. If it's less than zero, it's concave down. I can go back to 4, 3, where we set up intervals here and look to the left and to the right of it. And so I just plugged in a zero here. I plugged in a two here. I just plugged something in these inner I hear music. If the C, if they're positive um, or negative. And so if they're negative, concave down. Um, if they're positive, concave up. So once again, well, I don't have the graph again showing again, but once again, that this helps me draw my pictures, knowing concave up, concave down. But as I mentioned with the slide before, you really didn't have to do that.